This morning we have new images and new details on a train derailment in Maine's Moosehead Lake region. Why this happened and what officials are now saying about it. And we're going to take it to Thomas College for the school's annual mud run. Our Miles Hood is going to join us live with all the details on the highly anticipated race. Hey, good morning and thank you so much for waking up with us early today. I'm Terry Stackhouse. Today is Sunday, April 16th. Cool start to the day. Let's get right to Maine's total weather with meteorologist Colleen Hurley. Colleen, we've enjoyed a stretch of sunshine, but it seems like that's coming to an end today. This morning, we have new images from the scene of a train derailment near Moosehead Lake. This injured three. Moose River Fire and Rescue based out of Jackman. They posted these photos online. Canadian Pacific Railways confirming that one of their trains derailed yesterday happened in the morning hours in Somerset County. Another responding agency, Rockwood Fire and Rescue, sharing photos as well. According to the Maine Forest Service, three locomotives and six cars carrying lumber and electrical wiring derailed on this track due to a washout from built up melting snow and ice and also other debris. That derailment did start a small forest fire. There were hazardous materials on board the train, but those cars did not derail. Three railroad employees were taken to a hospital for non life threatening injuries. Officials say that there's no threat to the public here, but they are still asking locals to avoid the area. Two miners in Waterville are charged with terrorizing this after a threat went out from a student's email account it happened late Friday night. Police say that the threat aimed at students and staff was not sent by the student whose account it was. The agency says that officers tracked down the actual location of the center. Waterville's assistant superintendent emphasizing the importance of reaching out if you hear anything concerning. So you've made a decision you just have you to announce it? I told you my plan is to run again. President Biden saying that he plans to announce his intentions to run for re-election soon in an official capacity, saying that his recent trip to Ireland reinforced a sense of optimism about, quote, what can be done, as the president said. New revelations this morning about those classified documents leaked by Massachusetts Air National Guardsman Jack Trichera. The Washington Post obtaining copies of some of those leaked files. ABC's Karina Mitchell has more on what those files contained. One of Donald Trump's lawyers is no longer going to be representing him. This coming as the special counsel investigating whether Trump mishandled classified documents when he left the White House. Evan Corcoran recused himself because he testified before a grand jury investigating evidence in this case. Corcoran will still represent Trump in other investigations, including what, if any, role he played in the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. A spokesperson for Trump's campaign said that reports about Trump's lawyer are incorrect. As the national debate over abortion continues, the Supreme Court is stepping in, issuing an administrative stay in order to keep the drug Mifepristone available, at least for now. The court has until Wednesday to decide its next steps. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has more on how the outcome of this case could impact the FDA's approval process. A memorial service is held for the 129 sailors lost after the USS Thresher submarine sank. This was 60 years ago this week. That service happening at Trape Academy in Kittery. The USS Thresher was built at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard and sailed from Portsmouth Harbor on its final journey. It sank 220 miles off of Cape Cod, where it remains to this day. Those who spoke at the service say that the sacrifice of those 129 men on board that ship will never be forgotten. The Thresher was the largest submarine disaster in U.S. history. This past week was Black Maternal Health Week. Advocates are working to try to raise awareness of maternal equity, as it's called. According to the CDC, black women are three times more likely to die from pregnancy-related issues compared to white and Hispanic women. In North Texas, a group of women are hoping to discuss those statistics. A licensed doula says she sees these statistics firsthand. During National Child Abuse Prevention Month, the main nonprofit Walk a Mile in Their Shoes is hosting three listening sessions to hopefully prevent deaths and the abuse of children in Maine's Child Protective Services programs. The first Save Maine Kids Listening Tour that's taking place in April at Penny Memorial Church in Augusta. There's still two more listening sessions, which are both happening this month. Tomorrow, April 17th from 6 to 8 o'clock at the East Auburn Baptist Church, and then April 19th from 6 to 8 at the American Legion in Rockland. The intent is for child care providers to speak freely about their experiences without any fear of retaliation. Still ahead on this Sunday morning, Steve Minnick has taken us to Pilot Farms to meet some creative costume designers in this week's Made in Maine. Before we get there, though, Colleen Hurley has taken a look at your Sunday forecast. A little gloomier, Colleen.
hate to bring the rain on the runners. Well, you know, you brought it. It's, <laughs> it's here. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, really, though, as long as you're not getting the extremes, I think this is good news for the runners. A little moisture in the right. air. You probably don't need that extra layer if you're going to do the whole 26. So It's not going to be driving rain, pouring rain, at right. least for them. And so. the runners have seen that in the past. Four or five years ago, it right. was just torrential the whole way. I think it was 2018. I was looking at the stats. Yeah, wow. not quite that Someone bad. did their homework. <laughs> <laughs> Colleen, thank you. You're we'll welcome. check in in just a bit. People living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, trying to return to a sense of normalcy now after several days of historic flooding, widespread damage. State of emergency was issued there to try to help provide resources to the thousands who are trapped in floodwaters there. The airport was closed, businesses, others really stranded to try to get help. Yesterday, the airport did reopen, but just with limited operations. Now all eyes are on another storm bringing more rain to the area today. Welcome to the 56th annual Kenduskig Stream Canoe Race. Well, it's an annual tradition of the Bangor region. You gotta love it. Kenduskig Stream Canoe Race. You got paddlers, spectators, all making their way to what is a quintessential main event. It was first held all the way back in 1967, and since then, it's been raced in concrete canoes, war canoes, old town canoes, of course, because they make them right up there, kayaks, and even one year, somebody heading down the river in a bathtub. It's kind of like old home week. You come out here, you see everyone. Winter's over, we're out. It's a beautiful day. I don't know how cold the water is. Do you know why canoes make really good hats? We don't. Must be something with a canoe. Because they're capsized. <laughs> yeah, we got jokes for you, too. This year, about 650 people participated in the event. In this week's Made in Maine, Steve Minnick has taken us to Pine Lid, where he shows us some very creative costumes tailored by some very creative people. Steve Minnick reporting there. By the way, since we first met Ellen last year, she's since filed a lawsuit against eBay, Amazon, and Walmart. She's suing those companies to stop them from using what she claims are pictures of her products, which include photos of her own kids, to sell fake, similar-looking knockoff costumes, which she said are made overseas in China. This was yesterday in Boston. Mayor Michelle Wu joining the families of people who lost loved ones in the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing. Those are attendants laying wreaths at the memorial sites in Boylston Street before walking in a procession to the second memorial wreath laying site. And tomorrow we do hope that you join us for our exclusive live coverage of the Boston Marathon Channel 8 right here at WMTW. It all starts with our early newscast 4.30 a.m. You can join us throughout. Marathon special starts at 8 o'clock. Our live race coverage has cameras set up throughout the 26 mile course. We'll continue that till one in the afternoon. Plus, we'll have a full recap of the marathon, all the winners, Maine's total coverage starting first at four in the afternoon. Thomas College in Waterville is hosting their seventh annual Dirty Dog Mud Run. By the looks of this, <laughs> it's going to get real muddy. We're checking in live now with our Miles Hood, who's looking at the course there. And, and Miles, I was seeing some video of past events. This race is gnarly. What do you think? Time, Terry. I got to ask you, would you ever do a mud run in? in your time, man. Sure, I, I, I'm embarrassed to admit I haven't done one. I've done plenty of 5K fun runs, but never muddy ones. I've done 5Ks that happen to be a little muddy, but you know, these are hardy maters. These are brave runners. What do you think? Would you try, Miles? Listen, I'm, I'm currently in jeans and a station jacket, so I don't know if I'm geared up for the mud run part, but I definitely could get down with it one day. Oh, come on, Miles. That's, that's a you problem. <laughs> we'll check in with you on our next half hour. Miles, thank you. It is 47 degrees in Portland. Time right now is 524 still to come. Yesterday, for the first time, a certain holiday was celebrated publicly in Westbrook. We'll tell you about what this means for locals just after this break. Before we get there, though, Colleen Hurley's taking a look at your travel forecast. It'll rain today, Colleen. Yesterday in Westbrook, a holiday was celebrated that hadn't been celebrated publicly before in the city. Dozens coming out for this local Cambodian community celebrating the New Year's holiday with a parade at a festival at Riverbank Park. This was organized by the local Buddhist temple, featured many traditional foods and dances. It was the first time that the community had celebrated in this park on this scale, and community leaders say it's not going to be the last time either. It's so exciting. It's so nearly. Um, I, I just like, I can't stop smiling to see everybody enjoy their um, traditional uh, celebration uh, holidays. There are an estimated 4,000 members of the Cambodian community living right here in southern Maine. It is 529 here in this Sunday morning. Still ahead, it was a special day for Lewiston. We'll tell you about how the city is trying to 
clean up some of the trash left behind. Hey, good Sunday morning and thank you so much for waking up with us today. I'm Terry Stackhouse. Here's a look at some of the top stories that we're trying to get for you this morning. There's been a lot of talk nationally about train derailments everywhere recently, Ohio, Massachusetts. But now we're getting new images of one that happened right here in Maine yesterday morning. And for this week's Community Champion, we're going to meet some women who aren't content letting gender roles limit their career choices. And gas stoves, they've been quite the conversation topic lately. In this week's Consumer Reports, we're taking a look at how they stack up against electric. Before we get to all that, though, meteorologist Colleen Hurley is looking at your forecast. And Colleen, maybe some rain today, but it seems like the fog at this hour is the real issue. New images coming into our newsroom this morning of that train derailment near Moosehead Lake. It injured three workers. Moose River Fire and Rescue out of Jackman. They posted these pictures on social media last night. Canadian Pacific Railways confirming that one of their trains derailed yesterday. This is in Somerset County. Another responding agency, Rockwood Fire and Rescue, sharing photos as well. According to the Maine Forest Service, three locomotives and six cars carrying lumber and electrical wiring derailed due to a track wash up. This is caused by a buildup of melting ice and debris. That derailment did start a small forest fire. There were some hazardous materials on board. Those cars didn't derail, though. Three railroad employees, they were taken to hospitals with non-life-threatening injuries. Officials say that there's no threat to the public right now, but they are asking people to avoid the area. Lewiston Spring Litter Pickup Day. This was held yesterday. People from around the city gathering in Kennedy Park. That's where Lewiston Public Works provided things like bags, gloves, pickers, and buckets to help rid the city of stray garbage. Lewiston Mayor Carl Shaleen said that keeping the city beautiful is everyone's job. Mary's Firemen for Cure and the Dempsey Center are announcing a new partnership. Starting this year, the Dempsey Center will be receiving all proceeds from the annual Mary's Firemen for a Cure Memorial Ski Race. We covered this live several weeks ago. Those donations will support the Dempsey Center's Women's Support Group in honor of Mary, whose battle with cancer inspired the ski event, and an effort to make sure that those proceeds stay locally right here in Maine. The Washington Post is reporting that U.S. intelligence agencies were aware of up to four additional Chinese spy balloons. The Post is citing documents leaked by Jack Trichera on Discord for their report. They're also reporting that the documents show that questions still remain about the true capabilities of at least one of those balloons. This is the one that flew over the U.S. earlier this year and was shot down over the coast, off the coast of South Carolina. One of the largest sellers of wedding gowns in the United States is laying off thousands of workers. David's Bridal is eliminating over 9,200 positions. That's according to a notice filed with the Pennsylvania Department of Labor. Layoffs started on Friday and are expected to continue through the summer. Those layoffs come as problems grow for David's Bridal, which is reportedly filing for bankruptcy for the second time in five years. All stores, for now, are at least planned to stay open. Gas versus electric. This has been a heated debate among home chefs for years now. Recently, gas stoves have kind of become a hot political topic as well. Not sure which one to choose for your home? Christina Frank went to the experts at Consumer Reports. They reveal a newer cooking option that you might want to consider. In our community champion this week, we're celebrating some people getting started in the first of eight affordable houses going up in South Portland. This is part of Women's Build Day with Habitat for Humanity. A volunteer team made up entirely of women worked on the first homes as part of this new build. One volunteer who works in the construction field helped organize the opportunity. So I was trying to find a way that we could get more women exposed to working in construction and to gaining some familiarity with tools and being able to use a skill saw and everything else. And as you can see, we've got a, a fabulous crew out here today. More opportunities for women to volunteer next month. You can sign up on their website. The eight affordable homes caught up in South Portland are expected to be complete sometime 2025. Fox News has formally apologized to the judge overseeing the Dominion defamation case against the company. In a letter, Fox's lawyer said that it never intended to omit information or mislead the court about Rupert Murdoch's formal role at Fox News. In past court filings, Fox lawyers repeatedly said that Murdoch didn't have an official title at Fox News. But last week, Fox disclosed that Murdoch is also an executive officer at Fox News. The defamation trial is set to begin tomorrow. There's a new push to fight climate change and lower utility bills across the state of Michigan. Lawmakers introducing a plan that is intended to help people and businesses cut utilities and slash carbon emissions. So the Democrats in that state want to see more of these types of projects across the state with proposals offering incentives for carbon neutral projects. Under the proposals, utilities will also have until 2035 to get rid of greenhouse gas emissions from power plants. It's a plan that some lawmakers find aggressive yet plausible.
That's a very aggressive timetable, but we are moving in that direction uh, and are confident that we are going to be replacing uh, coal and um, carbon emitting generation with solar and wind. People can save up to um, 30 percent on the costs and in some cases even more of uh, doing this kind of work for their home. Yeah, the hope among supporters of the initiative is that saving money will also help save the environment. And tomorrow, we hope that you join us live for our exclusive coverage of the Boston Marathon. Channel 8 WMTW is your home for all things Boston Marathon. Starts with our first newscast beginning at 4.30 a.m. We'll have live reports throughout the day. Marathon special starts at 8 o'clock. And our live race coverage, we have cameras set up throughout the course. That broadcast will continue until 1 o'clock. And we'll have a full recap of Marathon Monday and Maine's total coverage starting at 4 in the afternoon. Still ahead on the Sunday morning, going bald for a cause, the UMaine event that had students and faculty shaving their heads, all to help fund cancer research. First, though, Colleen Hurley is taking a look at your Sunday, and it's far from a washout, Colleen, but it's not a great, bright day like we've seen. Pretty comfortable. I don't know if I want to call it the Goldilocks zone, Terry. The sure, we can go ahead and call like it that. 60s to around 70, so just shy of the sweet spot. This you know, it, it's all like circumstantial, that. though, right? I mean, with the, with the marathon being tomorrow, it, it will be interesting to watch how competitive this field is. And temperatures, you know, very mild in the mid 50s. That could be optimal for you know for record setting conditions. Yeah, we don't want to see too high of heat. That starts to cause a lot of heat yeah. stress, and we don't want to see it too cold either, numbing up the runners. <laughs> so hopefully, that's a good zone for runners in the 50s. This is what running looks like. I have, I'm not a runner. Okay, <laughs> don't judge. <laughs> that's how they're going to set the records. Just yeah, you know, it's it's all in the elbows. <laughs> all right, Colleen, thank you. You're well, right. you know, while we're on the subject here, Thomas College in Waterville. They're hosting their seventh annual Dirty Dog Mud Runner. Miles Hoodish joining us live from the course. Miles, I imagine it's pretty muddy. How's it looking from your vantage point? Terry, I'm going to pass it back to you, and I've promised mud, so I must deliver. Miles, did you bring a <laughs> change of clothes? No. Towel? No. <laughs> That's going to be a long ride for you back to Westbrook, man. We'll see yeah, you at our next Nico's half hour, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> We'll talk to you again soon. Miles Hood reporting there for us live from Thomas College. Thank you. This is a crazy way to enter the record books. Check this out. This is an Australian father, Lucas Helmke, recording over 3,200 push-ups in an hour. That's almost one per second. Helmke pulled this off back in November at his gym, but was recently informed that he had actually broken the record. This has to be verified, of course. This is held previously by another Australian. Took Helmke two years to prepare for this challenge. He set out to prove to his son that anything is possible. Hopefully his son is proud. Going bald for a great cause. You made students and faculty going under the electric razor all to benefit cancer research. This is hosted by Circle K International, all Maine women and two on campus fraternities. The event also included live music. There was plenty of food for people to enjoy. Organizers tell us just how much good can come from an event like this. And it's really just overwhelming to be able to see the turnout and how many people are learning about the cause. Because it's not necessarily about the money we raise, but the awareness we raise for the fact that in, worldwide, every like two minutes, kids get diagnosed with cancer and one in five of those people don't make it. So it's really nice to be able to see people here and supporting that cause. Yeah, they mentioned a lot of music. Good tunes there, too. That event raised more than $1,500 for the St. Baldrick's Foundation. Great cause. They are the largest charity funder of childhood cancer research grants. Great stuff. Colleen, joining us now with a look at morning trivia. Colleen, what do we got today? Well, our next holiday, sort of on everyone's mind, maybe Mother's Day, but we actually have oh, no. Earth Day <laughs> next weekend. We get to celebrate the Earth before we got to worry about the present for mom. Yeah, That's seriously, coming next, just reminded me. Next Saturday, every April 22nd. So the first Earth Day was back in 1970, and it led to the creation of which of the following? organizations. We've got the National Climate Task Force, the National Park Service, the EPA, or the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. I thought the answer was actually going to be Mother's Day, but <laughs> you know, that can't be the case. All right, we're thinking about this for a couple minutes. You can do the same. We'll see you on the other side. All right, Terry, next weekend on Saturday, we'll be celebrating Earth Day. So our trivia question for today was about the first Earth Day back in 1970. That led to the creation of which of the following? Is it the National Climate Task Force, National Park Service, EPA, or the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change? Well, who could forget when the National Climate Task Force <laughs> was founded? So uh, I'm going to go with... Um, 
Let's go with number, oh, a fun one, I guess, the National Park Service. We're all familiar with their work. It was actually the Environmental Protection Agency back in 1970 go after many, many demonstrations from teachers and students all across the country, and we've been celebrating it every April 22nd since. That is a fun fact. <laughs> Colleen, thank you. You're welcome. Before you start your day, we're going to take a quick look at our top story from this morning, a train derailment near Moosehead Lake, leaving three crew members from that train just minor injuries, thankfully. Canadian Pacific Railways confirming that this is their train involved. See the photo there. Happened yesterday in Somerset County on the western edge of the lake. Three locomotives, six cars carrying lumber and electrical wiring derailed due to a track washout that was caused by, caused by a buildup of melting ice and debris. That derailment did start a small forest fire. There were hazardous materials on board the train, but those cars did not derail. Officials are asking everyone to avoid the area. And as we head into our break, we're taking a live look outside where it is a foggy start to the day, but at least temperature wise, it's comfortable at this moment. A little more rain coming our way. We're going to talk about that with our full forecast. Colleen has that on the other side of this break. We'll see you then.